that we cannot import, we cannot industrialize the way these things is. Look at the Peugeot plant, it's closing down. So as long as these SACU tariffs issues are not going to be re uh, reconciled and democratically decided, as we agreed, but now South Africa plays the game, so we have to seriously also look at the future of SACU. Are we still really together in that? Or are people planning something else and are we just sitting with our hands folded, not looking for alternatives? You scholars, please think of it. Seriously, it's not back, you aren't backing anybody. Imports come, cars will come. You can never order a car directly from Germany, who have been here in this country for a long time. Mercedes Benz, you have to order through South Africa. They add value there, create job, transfer technology, mark up and sell it to us. Is that really good? Good neighborhood? No, it is not. It's a problem that we are dealing with our neighboring country, friendly country, uh, a big brother. So we are still going to negotiate until we reach that stage that we are saying enough is enough. Dr. Gengob also raised concern about the announcement of new BRICS members, which was done without formally spelling out the requirements. Namibia was among over 50 countries invited to attend the BRICS summit in South Africa this August. These are the things I'm talking about. I was promised there will be no way to bypass and so on. We're all laughing about that. But we're not even told to who are the candidates, what are the conditions, requirements, we are a member of, not that we want to become members, but what are the requirements? The pre-arranged. Seven countries were admitted there. Not announced in the meeting, it was announced at a press conference. These are the things we don't want to accept. The long-standing unresolved issue of the Orange River boundary was another with the president questioning why South Africa is unwilling to follow international law. What is the problem behind that problem? Why don't South Africans want to follow international law, which requires well, well, the river, it must be in the center, they say. Maybe there are resources, good ones. Now you have to think again, if that is the case, tell us so we can talk as brothers and sisters, whether we can have a shared, maybe thing. Time has come for that. 30 years to talk about Orange River. Some challenge in general is everybody to investigate and give us solution. Maybe you'll have it. Maybe say, well, it's Pan-Africanism. Why don't you divide Africa? Come and develop resources together. What resources are there? I don't know. Maybe they are there. But we must solve that problem. Definitely. Dr. Gengob, who updated the nation on progress made in the year of revival, praised Namibia's resilience to endure hardship, stating that the country is on a positive trajectory, considering its potential for the green energy transition. The head of state stressed that this has positioned Namibia as a leading country in green hydrogen as a future energy source. Accountability and transparency has marked the year of revival as President Gengob has made strides in the area of inclusivity and continue the drive towards shared prosperity despite challenges experienced. Siamantikwa, NBC News, Ventuk.